What's up guys? Welcome back to Investing PH. Today we will evaluate a giant in the food industry and is a very well-known brand in the Philippines and in the world. This is also my favorite fast food restaurant ever since I was young. This is Jollibee Foods Corporation or JFC. I'm really looking forward to analyze this company. So without a minute to waste, let's start. Now, I would like to remind you guys, this is my own thoughts and analysis of the company. And this video is just a quick background of the company and its financials. It's not a complete analysis. It's just an additional information for you guys to your own valuation. So please don't just rely on what I say and what other people say in your investing decisions. Anyway, before we start, do click that like button first. And if you still haven't yet subscribed to my channel, would really mean a lot to me if you subscribe right now. I not only talk about investing but also my journey towards financial freedom. Moving on, who is JFC? Jollibee Foods Corporation does their business under the name and style of Jollibee. The parent company was incorporated in the Philippines and registered with the Philippine Securities and Exchange Commission on January 11, 1978. The parent company and its subsidiaries, collectively referred to as the Jollibee Group, and affiliates are involved primarily in the development, operations, and franchising of quick service restaurants or QSRs under the trade names Jollibee, Chowking, Greenwich, Fo24, Red Ribbon, Mang Inasal, Burger King, Yonghae King, Hong Zhuang Yuan, Hard Rock Cafe, Smash Burger, The Coffee Bean, and lastly, they also have Dunkin' Donuts as a subsidiary. So JFC has now a total of over 5,800 stores spanning 33 countries. Other activities of the Jollibee Group include manufacturing and property leasing in support of their quick service restaurants. JFC is also a significant investor in Titan Dining LP, the ultimate holding entity of Tim Ho Won. They announced on February 15, 2021 that they will establish a 50-50 joint venture with Yoshinoya International Philippines, Incorporated. To operate and expand the Yoshinoya brand in the Philippines. Now, Yoshinoya is a beef bowl business based in Japan and one of the largest and most recognized Japanese restaurant brands globally. With over 2,000 stores worldwide, the joint venture company will be the franchisee for Yoshinoya in the Philippines. JFC also operates a total of 19 commissaries worldwide, 11 in the Philippines, 2 in China, 4 in the United States, and 2 in Vietnam. It builds and operates its own commissaries to supply food products to its restaurants. This supply chain strategy aims to achieve superiority in product quality and a very high level of assurance in food safety. This is also one thing to take note on. Jollibee provides their own commissaries for their food products. Now these are their total sales and the percentage of their foreign sales. So we can see in 2020, foreign sales went up since local sales went down really hard because of the extended lockdown in our country. With that, let's go on to their financials. Again, we would still be following our checklist in valuating this company. Do watch my other videos as well to further understand every line of my checklist. First, let's look at their income statement. We can see the effect of the pandemic. 2019 had negative growth while 2020 had negative earnings. Now, we all know that this lockdown really hit restaurants hard with the rules about dine-ins and everything. So I'm really not surprised about this. Now let's look at the revenue first. We can see the revenue growth is really good, more than 10% every year. Now even with the negative growth of the pandemic, their average revenue growth is 10.23% for the past 10 years. Next, let's see how well they produce net profits from their revenue. We can also see they have good growth prior to 2019 and 2020, except for 2015. But the following year, they have a 25% net income growth rate, mitigating that negative growth year. Now, since 2020 had negative net income, this pulls down their average net income growth rate. But if we exclude 2020, their average is sitting at 10.36% even with the negative growth of 2019. Now, why do I sometimes exclude 2020? Well, just imagine the effect of the pandemic. A lot of restaurants were closed, but their stores are still standing and ready to go after this pandemic. And I am certain when the pandemic subsides, People would still eat in the restaurants. They are well-known brand in the first place. Anyway, moving on, their net income margin is stable throughout the years, sitting at the range of 4-6%. to 6%. Now, I won't be comparing Jollibee to McDonald's, guys. If you don't know yet, 
McDonald's is actually more on the real estate business. Their margins are way higher so comparing the two doesn't add up much. Anyway, this is still a check for me. This is excluding 2020. Take note on this one. Moving on to their balance sheet. Now we can see they had massive growth in 2020. So they still invested more even during a pandemic. Their 10-year average growth rate is sitting at 14.62%. With this, it's a check. Moving on to their ROE. So we look at their 5-year ROE average. Now their ROE in 2020 would be negative, of course, since their net income is negative. Still, their 5-year ROE average, including 2020, is sitting at 9.62%. But if we look at 2019, their 5-year ROE average is at 16.11%. So do take note on that. That's where they left off before the pandemic. Now, ROE tells us how efficient a company is in generating net profits from its equity. Now, I want to show you their ROE for the different years as well. We can see their ROE sits above 15% every year. The only exemption is this pandemic. So this is still a check for me. Moving on, let's check if they don't rely on too much debt to grow their ROE. This is the debt to equity ratio. So for their debt ratios this time, I would be strict since debt is the one that can hamper their comeback after this pandemic. So in 2020, they have a debt to equity ratio of 2.10. So slightly above what we want, not bad for the pandemic, though it's an X for me. This is one thing to take note on. It's just slightly above the number that I want. Now we go to their free cash flow. Their FCF is in the positive line and is growing from 2016 to 2018, then had a slightly negative growth in 2019, and in 2020, a negative number. Again, not that surprising for this pandemic, but since free cash flow is something that we need for our next valuation, this is an X for me. But I just want to show you guys their FCF from 2010 to 2020. They had only two years that they had a negative free cash flow, which is 2014 and 2020. Moving on, since their free cash flow is negative, this will also be an X for us since our next valuation relies on their FCF. We want this valuation to be less than 3 years. This is by dividing their long-term debt using their FCF. Now, although this is an X for my list, if we look at their previous years again, for 2010 to 2020, they only failed 2 times for this valuation. JFC can always pay their long-term debt in just under 2 years. So do take note on this one, even though it's an X for my list. This too could have been a check if the pandemic didn't complicate things up. Next, let's look if they are handling their short-term obligations well. This is the current ratio. This is again computed by current assets divided by current liabilities. With this, we only get 1.36. This means they have 1.36 peso of current assets for every 1 peso of current liabilities. A check for me. Now, since their earnings is negative, we won't have a PE ratio for this one. So with that, I will show their PE ratio based on their 2019 earnings per share or EPS. So using that, we divide it to their price. We get 28.51. So still quite high. If you look at their previous years, their average PE really sits around 32.57 to 39.77 for the past 5 years. This is an X for me since what I want is for a PE ratio of less than 15. Next, does the company pay out dividends? Now, JFC gives out dividends every year, although not that high. Their yield in 2020 is at 0.69% based on the current price, although yearly they increase their dividends except for 2020, but still, it's not that really high. Moving on, does the company have a moat? Now, Jollibee clearly has a big brand moat, not only in our country but for all around the world. They are really well known and is still continuing its expansion to different restaurant brands. Their other subsidiaries as well is also well known. And if you also look at their financials, it is not left behind. Although 2020 really hit them hard, their overall growth rate is good, well handled short term and long term debt. With this, this is definitely a check for me. Next, does the company have a good leader? Its chairman is Tony Tan Kak -tiong. Now most of us already know this guy. He also has stakes in Double Dragon, partnering with also a renowned leader, Ed Garcia. Now their CEO and president, Ernesto Tan Mantiong, is also a well-rounded leader, which was recognized as Entrepreneur of the Year by Asia Leaders Awards in 2020. With this, I think the management team of JFC is in good hands. This is a check for me. Lastly, is it within my buy below price? My computed intrinsic value for JFC is 238.08. With a margin of safety of 30%, my buy below price is 167. Jollibee upon the creation of this video is at 188. 
Now guys, please don't just rely on my computation. Still, use your own intrinsic value computation. Chances are we are using different growth projections for this company and a different discount rate. So still do your own research and your own computation. So with that, JFC scored 7 out of 12 in my checklist. Now again, the notes I told you a while ago. Their pre-pandemic performance is really great. Though they could have had higher check in my list, I was really strict on the debt valuation part. I didn't exclude 2020 for that because debt is a big factor to consider in forecasting their future growth. Anyway, if I miss out on some information, do comment it down below for us. Would really appreciate that. Just a reminder again, this video is just a quick background of the company. Please, you shouldn't base your investing decisions based on what I'm saying. It has to be on your own analysis. Just use the data you got from here as an addition to your own study about the company. So with that, if you haven't yet liked the video, now is the time for that. And might as well click the subscribe button if you aren't still subscribed yet. So see you in the next video.